Hey guys, this is Mike Jones and welcome to another NASCAR Racing 2003 season tutorial. Today I am going to go over the driver ratings, what all of them mean, the min and max and all of that, so let's get into it. Alright, starting out with aggression, if you right click it, it will uh, tell you kind of a rundown. It says patient level when attempting to pass or block high aggression may increase the chance of driver error. I actually don't think the higher aggression um, increases the chance of driver error because it, I've messed with it a lot. So, But it is right, patient's level when attempting to pass, the higher your aggression is, the high, the more often you're going to pass and block, the lower the more often they're going to not pass or block. So if you have a really low aggression, you're probably going to end up getting passed by a lot of people and stuck behind people. And if it's high, you're going to go for passes all the time. So the max, max is, um, how would I, ooh, I didn't even know you could right click this. All right, ratings are based on a 1 to 100 scale. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is kind of just telling you how to change it and stuff. Anyway, the max is like if your driver is at its full potential, that's how much aggression it is. And the min is the lowest. So basically what the AI does in a race is when this guy's trying to attempt to pass, it's from 89 to 79. It will pick a random number between there, I believe. And so let's say, I don't know, 84, for example, and then he will go for the pass at 84 aggression if that makes any sense uh, consistency ability to run consistent labs note that this is possible to be consistently slow consistency also uh, affects the chance of driver error I did not know it affected the chance of driver error huh all right I did not know that but I did know the consistency does make it the lap times more closer so basically the higher up your consistency, the more consistent your driver is on lap times, and the lower, the more your drivers can be all over the place. So if you lower the consistency, you'll probably have some a lot of passing and comers and goers and stuff. But yeah, uh, so same thing. Max is the most. Yeah. So I, re I already went over mini max. I'm not going to go over that again. Finishing the ability to finish a race. Drivers with a high finishing rating will get stronger as the race near its ends. From what I have found out, I believe it is the last 10 laps that this kicks in. And yes, so the higher you're finishing, the more better you're going to perform at the end of a race. And you definitely see that in my Piston Cup series because uh, Lightning McQueen has a higher finishing. Uh, in fact, my last video at Pocono, you can see him kind of take off a little bit when he won the race. And I believe that's probably why it's because his finishing helped him qualifying overall performance in qualifying sessions only so uh, I think the qualifying still bases all of the other stats too but it's kind of a multiplier so the higher you're qualifying the better you're gonna qualify in the race if you have a good car and the lower the worse that's pretty easy all of these tracks overall performance on road courses short track or uh, yeah, so all of these, even though it says overall performance on these types of tracks, um, yeah, these four, uh, that's not what I would say. That is not what it actually does. So what it does with this, I guess it kind of is an overall performance, but not really, and it does take a lot of difference. So if you have them really close together, you're not even going to see it, but with a big difference like 84 to 37 let's say on this road course one that is basically the amount of grip i would say to that track specifically because what i've seen is a uh, road course isn't good let's let's do speedway because that's easier anyway let, from what i've seen is the lower the number the more you slide up the track and kind of open the door and the higher number, the more you take the inside line, I guess, and the faster you are in the corners. So I would say it's better the more grip you have. I think it's like a traction type of thing is what it explains somewhere else. Uh, vehicles now. This is just the vehicle itself. It has nothing to do with how good the driver is. Aerodynamics. The ability of the car to slip through the air with a m minimum 
of a drag. Oh my goodness, I can't read. A uh, higher arrow reading means less drag, which translates to more speed pretty easily. Uh, aerodynamics are how fast you can go basically through the air. <laughs> I would say it's better at higher speeds for sure and super speedway type of tracks speedways stuff like that and it does make a big difference but I wouldn't say it makes quite as big as the engine but we'll go with that in a minute so the higher the aerodynamics the faster your car is going to be um, basically in general at speed. Uh, in the corners and the straightaways everywhere so not really even full throttle so yeah that's kind of like just an extra speed thing chassis is the grip level yes so I would say if you go back to the short tracks and stuff that's basically added to the chassis for the tracks so chassis is grip level basically how much grip you have so the the higher the higher, the more grip you have, the faster your car is going to be a little bit, and uh, the more lower you're going to go in the corners, which this game uh, prefers the inside line unless you do some modded tracks. So the higher chassis, you're going to drive a lower corner, and it's going to be harder to get past you and all that. Engine, more horsepower. Or horsepower. So the higher, the more horsepower you got, the lower, the less. Pretty easy. I would say it's probably the most the most uh, important maybe aerodynamics are equal but i would say engine is probably the most important out of all of these that will determine how you are so um engine horsepower um the higher the faster you're gonna take off the faster top speed uh basically it'll go hand in hand with aerodynamics but even more i would say it helps your acceleration too where aerodynamics don't really help your acceleration i don't think but it does help cornering so i guess they could be kind of even but anyway that's what engine does reliability chance of mechanical failure higher reliability translates to a lower chance of such an occurrence so obviously reliability has to do with mechanical failures so like blown engines and stuff the lower the reliability the bigger chance but also what I have known is if you are in a crash even a it doesn't matter what how big of a crash even a big crash if you have a high reliability you might be able to continue the race but if you have a low reliability you might be out of the race is what I have noticed that reliability does so it's kind of how strong your car is in general not just not just chances of mechanical failures but also how tough it is getting banged up pit crew so this is all pit crew only consistency the more consistent the pit crew is the less chance it is of making a mistake that's pretty easy and you can tell when they make mistakes because they are really slow when they make mistakes so the higher the consistency the uh, less likely they are to make mistakes and the lower the more likely they are to make mistakes speed a high rating translates to quicker times for all pit operations changing tires adding fuel making setup adjustments and repairing damage basically that is the easiest one on here the higher the speed the faster your pit crew is the lower the speed the slower pretty easy and now the most important one is strategy when it comes to pit crews. A measurement of the team's willingness to take pitting risks in order to gain track position. This can be done in several ways. The most obvious of which involves taking none or two tires rather than four. As this value increases, the, the team becomes more willing to take such chances because of this fact. A high strategy rating isn't necessarily better than a low one. Yes, so that actually explains it better than I thought it would. So, the lower your strategy, the more likely you are to pit, basically, for pit in general and pit for four tires and gas. You don't want to take any chances at all is basically the lower the strategy. So, basically, if you had it at zero, you would pit every caution for everything. And it's kind of the opposite for a hundred. For to have a car run out of gas, it has to have 100, I believe, is the only way it can run out of gas. Maybe 99 strategy, and it will push it all the way to the limit till it accidentally runs out of gas. I think it has to be 99 for that to happen. And let's see what else. Um, 
the more chances it will make taking two tires, no tires, all that. It wants to get the fastest pit stops it can. So if it can make it on a splash of fuel, it's only going to take a splash of fuel and no tires. If that makes sense. Uh, if, if it doesn't need tires, it won't take them unless it's getting enough fuel to where it might as well take the tires. So I think that makes sense. If, if it only needs enough fuel for the time to take right side tires, it's only going to take right side tires. So yeah, I think I explained that pretty well. If this did help, please let me know in the comments below and click the like button if you enjoyed it and want to see more tutorials. Comment any suggestions for future tutorials. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, all that. I hope this helped you. Share it with your friends and anybody else who needs help. And we'll see you guys next time.